Hey guys, it's Christy, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be doing a tag video I've seen going around, and this is the what would my collection look like if I was not on YouTube. So before we get into it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy, and let's get into it. So this one was really hard because I had to really think back to what types of products did I use before I was on YouTube? What were my go-tos? And when I think about that, I would have had a mix of drugstore and a lot of MAC products. I've always been a huge fan of MAC. I still am. I probably don't talk about them as much on my channel simply because a lot of people don't. I still really love a lot of their products. So. Let's just get into what my collection would look like if I was not on YouTube. Before YouTube, my go-to foundation was always the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation, and I went through bottles of that one. I would use it all up, buy it again. Use it all up, buy it again. I went through so many bottles of that foundation, and testing out different ones wasn't really something I would do. I would just find what worked and stick with it. I remember that was my go-to in college uh, when I first started working, but I think if I had never started YouTube, I would have continued on that same path and I would now just have the reformulated version, which is the HD Skin Foundation. So this replaced the Ultra HD, I would have gone to this. I would have been a little bit surprised that the formula changed, but I actually really like this formula even better, so I would have been okay with that. And this would probably be the only foundation I had in my collection. For concealer, I feel like I would have, I feel like I didn't use to place the biggest emphasis on concealer, just enough to cover those dark circles and call it a day. So I feel like I would have the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. This one went absolutely viral online this year, so I feel like that definitely would have caught my attention and I would have picked it up. And I really, really do love this one. This is the one I'm wearing today. It's not the most full coverage, but it is the most comfortable and it looks really nice on the skin. So I think I definitely would have gone for this one. Thinking about a powder. Powder is something I've always used just to lock in the makeup. I don't necessarily need powder all over my face. I have very dry skin and powder is a product I use to either lock in my concealer or take the tackiness out of a foundation. So I never really had a best powder in the world. So I probably would have picked up something from the drugstore and I'm pretty sure that would have been the CoverGirl Clean Fresh powder. I think I've used a few CoverGirl powders over the years, if I'm being entirely honest. That hasn't changed, obviously, but I really do like this powder in general. It's very finely milled. It looks really nice on the skin, and it would have been perfect for exactly what I was going for. For bronzer, due to its mass popularity online, I would still just have the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. This is this was so, so, so popular, and it still is, and I still really, really love it. I don't mind using this every single day, and this is just such a favorite of mine, even when compared to many of my other bronzers. I love this scent. I love how it's very silky. I love the finish on my skin. I really do love this bronzer, so this would have absolutely been one that I would have had. Coming to blush, I think this is something, I think this is something that I did have from MAC. I'm pretty sure I would have had Melba from MAC. So this is a classic peachy blush from MAC. And first of all, I just love the brand. This was my go-to brand for makeup. And this is just like a really nice peachy pink blush that just kind of goes with everything. So I think this is what I would have wanted because I probably wouldn't have had a really large blush collection. So I'm pretty sure I would have just gone with Melba to just cover all my bases and it's it's very beautiful. This formula, in my opinion, is very underrated from MAC. I think they still make some really amazing blushes. Moving into highlight, I am positive I would have gone with the Revlon Skin Lights Highlighter. So this is a really, really beautiful drugstore highlight. This is the one I'm wearing today. It can be very, very blinding if you build it up that way or you can just do a light dusting. It's still gonna be quite shiny, but it's just a really beautiful reflective highlight without being too much. And again, this is a drugstore product, so it is on the more affordable side. 
And highlight is something that I would not have wanted to spend a large chunk of change on. I think it's something I would have wanted to stay pretty affordable. So this one I can definitely see being in my collection if I wasn't on YouTube, especially just looking at the texture of the product. It's so pretty. This is something that definitely would have caught my eye and I definitely would have gone for this one. For a setting spray, I would have gone with the classic MAC Fix Plus. Again, when I didn't know what to do, MAC was where I went. This one, super nice, super hydrating. I love this one. So I really took it back from my mascara purchase. So I used to always, always say that you did not need to go for high-end mascara. And then I went through a phase where I was absolutely hooked on the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara. And then drugstore formulas continued to evolve, and now I'm back on the whole, you don't need to buy a high-end mascara train. And I still absolutely believe that. But for the longest time, I was obsessed with this, and just like the foundation, I would use up a tube and go buy a new one. So every three months, I was trudging over to Sephora to buy a new Better Than Sex mascara. I still really like this one. I just don't think it's the very best one. It's still a very good one, don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's better than anything else that's in my collection. But I probably would have just kept on the cycle of using this one and replacing it because I really, really did love this one. And to prime my eyes, I would have gone for the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. So mine is definitely very well loved. It's starting to get a little old and cracked, but this is a really good eye primer. This is the one I use today. It really does help shadows last longer. And I really do enjoy this quite a bit. So I probably would have had this as well and then I would have used my CoverGirl powder to set it, which is exactly what I did today. Some things just never change. Okay, I think I also would have had an eyeliner in my collection. I used to do the whole lower waterline black. I really fell into that trend. Now, not so much. However, I do like to tight line just to make my lashes look a little thicker. And for that, I would have gone for the Makeup by Mario Pigment Pro Pencil in the shade The Perfect Brown. I've used this today. I typically do use this one to tight line. I just really like this formula. I don't find it transfers down. I feel like you have a couple seconds when you first apply it that it will transfer, but if you can just keep your eyes open um, and let it dry and let it kind of set, then it won't transfer. And for that reason, I really love this. It does come with a brush on this end. I think if you apply it and you want to blend it out, but I don't think it's the best brush. I think there are other brushes I have in my collection that I would prefer to do that with. So I don't really use that much, but I do think this pencil is really, really great. So I definitely would have this in my collection as well. I also tend to just go with brown. I do find that black can look too harsh on me very easily. So I definitely would have gone for a brown. Okay, we're gonna get to eyeshadows, but really quickly, I just want to talk about brows. So my most used brow pencil, even before YouTube, was from MAC, and this is their Velux Brow Liner. So this one is just in pencil form. It does have a spoolie on one end, and it has, it is just a dry, waxy pencil on this side. However, the way, the, there's something about this, maybe it's the waxiness, but when you put this one in the brows, it kind of gives that powder brow effect, which is something I really liked. I did also use like a brow powder duo from Lise Watier at one point, but I feel like this was probably quicker for me, so I think I would have stuck with this one. And because it does look like a powder, it's kind of perfect. So I would just draw this one in, brush it out, and call it a day. I really like this one. I still do enjoy it, but I do still find it a bit waxy, so I do tend to reach for others over this one. I definitely would have had a really good brow gel because my brows are really unruly. I think they're just very light and they tend to fall really easily. I used to love the NYX Control Freak Brow Glue. That's the one I used to go for the very most. Since the NYX Brow Glue came out, I think this one would be the one that would be in my collection. This one is just really, really firm hold. Your brows are not going anywhere. It is a little too easy to make them look crunchy, but I do think this is really, really nice for just setting the brows in place and calling it a day. 
So I would definitely have this. So for eyeshadows, I would probably have a couple of smaller palettes and I think I would have gone for Natasha Denona as somebody who does watch beauty YouTube. I think I definitely would have some Natasha Denona minis because to this day, I'm a little bit of an eyeshadow snob. I was back then, I still am. I do think for the most part, higher end brands do it better. There are some affordable brands such as ColourPop who do have an amazing formula. But I'm pretty sure I would have had something from Natasha Denona. And so I picked out my two very favorite mini palettes and I picked out the mini nude because this would have been perfect for every single day. It's got these basic browns that we know I love, those brown shimmers, and I think this one would have been my go-to. But most recently, my absolute favorite Natasha Denona has been the Mini Biba. I am absolutely in love with these peachy tones, so I think I would have gone with something like this. When I wanted to switch it up from the brown, but I wanted to remain in my more neutral safety zone, so I think I would also have this one, but I really don't know if I would have any other eyeshadows. Before YouTube, the only part of my collection that was gener genuinely out of control was my lip collection. And for the most part, that is due to MAC lipsticks. So I absolutely would have had a MAC lipstick. I was actually kind of working on collecting all of the nude MAC lipsticks at one point. So I would have had one of these. Right here, I have the shade Brave. I have actually used up an entire tube of this shade. And my other favorite shade is Modesty, which is my perfect My Lips But Better. This one is definitely more pinky. I've used up a full tube of Brave. I have not finished Modesty, but that's one that I can definitely see myself finishing in the next few months. Again, my usage of lipstick has drastically decreased since I started working from home full time. But when I was in the office, I would go for lipstick every single day several times. Morning application and touch up. And I would go through phases where I preferred different shades. I would go through phases where I was more in the pinky, pinky lipstick preference. And I would go through days where I wanted a little bit more of that modesty that my lips fit better but kind of brown leaning lip. Some days that was the preference. So for that reason, I definitely would have had a MAC lipstick and I probably still would have a lot of those. It's just my favorite lip formula. I probably would have a lot from other brands as well. I know Urban Decay um, was really building up in my collection as well. So I do still think I would have a pretty large lip product collection. And for lip liner, I think I would just go with something from either NYX or MAC. But for this one, I decided to pull my NYX pencil liner. Their pencil liners are so good. They're not nearly as waxy as a MAC pencil. And this one is a nude suede shoe, so this is perfect for a really beautiful nude lip. And for a gloss, I would have probably just had a MAC lip gloss. This is... I've had this one for a while. This one is Oyster Girl. This one is a classic. My go-to lip combo lately is when I wear Cream Cup from MAC and I top it with Oyster Girl. Sometimes I'll switch it up and use a different lip liner. I've been using the Natasha Denona lip liner in the shade Natasha, but sometimes I'll use a different liner to give it a slightly different look. But I typically pair Cream Cup with Oyster Girl, which is actually really funny because this was my wedding lip combo. And it's still a favorite. It's just the perfect pinky nude. That is a favorite of mine, and I'm sure I would have had those, especially because it was my wedding combo. But that is what I think my collection would look like if I was not on YouTube. It would still be very, very heavy in the lip department, but it would have been pretty sparse in all the other areas, but it definitely would have been a mix of drugstore and, for the most part, MAC products. But that is it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload at least three new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!